Welcome to Anywhere Math. I'm Jeff Jacobson, and today we are going mad about the mean absolute deviation that is. Let's get started. Okay, today we're going a bit mad. And by mad, of course, I mean the mean absolute deviation. So before we get to an example, let's first talk about what that is. Well, mean, we know what that is, right? That's just an average. The other word I want to break down is deviation. Deviation comes from the verb to deviate. To deviate. And to deviate means you're just departing from the normal course of action. So, for example, if a car is going down the street on a straight road, that's the normal course of action, just going straight. Okay. But if they deviate from that, that means that instead of going straight, they're going to deviate. They're going to go off course. They're going to take this left. Okay. You may have seen in movies people say, don't deviate from the plan. That just means stay on the plan. Don't change from the plan. So that's what it means to deviate. With that in mind, the mean absolute deviation is just the average of how much the data values, whoops, sorry, of how much the data values differ from the mean. That is the mean absolute deviation. Let's try our first example. Example one, find and interpret the mean absolute deviation of the data. So the nice thing, our data is already in order. So the first step, I'm just going to go step by step on how to find the mean absolute deviation. Step one is just to find the mean. Okay, so that should be pretty simple. If I add these up, let's see, there's six, seven, plus 12 is uh, 19, plus 5 is 24. That's the sum divided by how many there are. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, divided by 8, and I get a mean of 3. Okay, step 1, simple, find the mean. Step 2 is to draw your dot plot. And one of them is going to be a little bit different than what we're used to. So first, uh, I'm just going to draw a normal dot plot, 1, 1. There's a dot there. Three twos. One, two, three. No threes. Three fours. One, two, three, and one five. Okay. So there's our just normal dot plot. Now I said dot plots. So we're also going to do a second one. And this one is going to be a little bit different. So I'm going to still line it up here the same. One, two, three, four, five. Okay. Now, remember, the three is my mean. Now, part of this, if you think mean absolute deviation, we talked about the mean part. We talked about the deviation part, how much it differs from the mean. The absolute part, you can think of like absolute value, a distance, right? Uh, that's always going to be positive. So what we're doing now is we are trying to figure out how far each of these data values is from the mean. So remember, this was 3 is my mean. Okay. So let's figure out how far each of these data points is from the mean. Well, 1 is 2 away from the mean. So I'm going to put a little 2 to replace that, that point, that dot for the one. Okay. Uh, then all of these twos here, they were only one away from the mean. So I'm going to put one, one, one. Okay. Hopefully you're kind of seeing how this works. These fours were also only one. Remember, we're not having a positive or negative, just like absolute value, just the distance away. So there's going to be one, one, one there. And this five was two away. So I'm going to put a two there. Let's try step three. Okay, step three, now we are ready to find the mean absolute deviation. 
So that is step three. Find mean absolute deviation. And to do that, all we do is find the mean of those values, those distances, how far away from the mean the numbers were. Okay. So I'm just going to add everything up. So 2 plus 1 plus 1 plus 1 plus 1 plus 1 plus 1 plus 2. Well, that's 2, 4, 6, 8, 10 equals 10. I'm going to divide it by how many values? There were 8, if we remember. So 10 divided by 8, 1.25. So my final answer, the mean absolute deviation is 1.25. So the second part of the question is to interpret the mean absolute deviation of the data. Well, we have a mean absolute deviation of 1.25, and that means on average, the data values were 1.25 away from the mean. Okay? Here's one to try on your own. All right, example two. Find the mean, median, and mean absolute deviation of the number of runs allowed by each pitcher. So the first pitcher we're going to do is Tim Lincecum from the San Francisco Giants. Uh, here are the amount of runs he's allowed in, let's see, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, in 10 games. So first thing we're going to do, let's start with the mean. So mean, we know how to do that. Add everything up. Well, let's see. That's 10, 20, 35. 35 runs divided by 10, we said, is 3.5. So on average, 3.5 runs per game. Uh, next, let's find the median. Let's see, this was 10 again, so that's an even number. We're going to have two right in the middle. So 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. Right in the middle of those two would be four runs. Uh, and finally, the mean absolute deviation. Okay. Well, remember, the mean was 3.5. So now I have to see how far away each of those values is from 3.5. You can do a dot plot, but if you're comfortable, let's see if we can do it uh, without a dot plot. So this zero, how far away is it from 3.5? Well, it's 3.5 away. That other zero, same. So 3.5 plus 3.5 plus 3.5 plus that 2 is 1.5 away. 1.5. The 4s are 0 0.5 away, a half. 0 0.5 plus 0 0.5. Hopefully I have enough room here. Uh, the 5 is 1.5 away. The 6, 2.5. And I'm... Gonna have to go down here plus another 2.5 for the other six plus the eight is 4.5 away. Okay, so a lot of things to add. 24 divided by 10 gives us a mean absolute deviation of 2.4. Okay, so that's kind of showing us how consistent uh, Tim Limsicum is. Okay. The mean absolute deviation is 2.4. Now let's do it for another pitcher. Okay, now let's do the same thing, but this time for Felix Rodriguez, one of my favorite pitchers. He's a Seattle Mariner. Um, so here are the amount of runs uh, Felix has given up for 10 games. So we're going to do the same thing. Find the mean, median, and the mean absolute deviation. If you want to try to do that on your own, go for it. You can pause the video. absolute deviation of 1.4 okay so now we've got the mean median and mean absolute deviation for both pitchers now let's go to part B okay here's part B which measure can you use to distinguish the data and then what can you conclude about the pitchers so 
First, we remember the mean for both pitchers was 3.5. The median for both was also the same. It was 4. The only thing different was the mean absolute deviation. So in this case, that's the measure we're going to use to distinguish uh, the data, the mean absolute deviation. So that's the answer to the first part. The second part, what can you conclude about the pitchers? Well, remember, the mean absolute deviation is kind of telling us how far away uh, all the data values were from the mean, from the average. So in this case, we can see that Felix Hernandez was much more consistent. His uh, amount of runs given up in each game was much closer to the mean, his average, uh, than Tim Lincecum's. We can conclude that Felix Hernandez is more consistent of a pitcher than Lincecum. Here's one to try on your own. Thank you so much for watching, and if you like this video, please subscribe.